Hey guys, Adam here, aka Antisina Guy. Look what's surprisingly here in the movie vault. Um, still got a few days off work, so got some time right now to make a movie review. You know, I'm so sorry I didn't post out a Halloween video. I have my reasons for that, but I don't want to get into those reasons. The bottom line is I've got some spare time right now to do a movie review, and I've noticed that the recent movie reviews I've been doing have been rants about me complaining about certain movies and certain things in WWE, shit like that. You know I don't enjoy doing those. I avoid rants when I can help it, because I like to review positive things, you know, good movies, classics, all-time greats, that sort of thing. And I can't think of a better way to do a late Halloween video on um, a movie, which I think is an all-time classic. It's def definitely going to be one of the best horror movies ever made. And I think everyone's seen this movie by now. If you're not, you're missing a fucking classic. Loads of horror movies were inspired by this movie. And it's this film that here that came in the year of 1974. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And yes, this is on Blu-ray. And many people do know that every time I do like a review, like on a old film from the 70s or the 80s, you know I like to have them on VHS or DVD. Because you can get a feel of the whole movie then. You know, the graininess, the old backgrounds, the um, you know, the texture of the film, you know, like the dark back, you know, like, like it's, it's like it's like Hellraiser, for example. You know, that film was made in the 80s, and the sound effects are all grainy, you know, the sound effects are like, like, sound like all booming with the music and things like that. Well, when you watch them on a VHS tape, it stands out more, you know, but if you watch it on Blu-ray, you can see, like, all the bloopers, all the bad points and things like that. It's a nice thing to check out, but I like to think that you, these type of movies should be watched on VHS. You know, old quality tape. Because the graininess and the fuzziness goes well with the um, the texture of the movie, if that makes sense. So when you've got booming music in this, and although there wasn't so much booming music, I think it's just a scene where Leatherface like, stands through that steel door, and it gives like that booming sound effect. I think that usually stands out more like in a... You know, a VHS copy, more than like a Blu-ray and a DVD copy. It's just the way, it's just the way I see it. So, VHS, it's not a sign of ancientness. It's a sign of just seeing things better, like in old movie style, in my opinion. But this is one movie I don't have on VHS. And I definitely will get this movie on VHS. When I'm in the mood to sit back and watch a classic horror movie, where you can get a feel for the whole project and get like a feel of how it was back in the old days, then VHS is the best option. But I've only got this on Blu-ray right now. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to get this on Blu-ray is because the, um, I mean, this has got two discs in, um, disc one and disc two, and it's got, f it's fucking full of all kinds of special features. Um, the 40th anniversary um, restoration, you know, stuff from Tobe Hooper, um, you know, there's, there's some commentary stuff, you know, there's outtakes, there's um, galleries, you know, there's interviews. You know, deleted scenes, trailers, you know, there's fucking hours worth of stuff in this, in this edition. And it's so fucking amazing to check out. So, if you are going to get this on Blu-ray, make sure you check out the special features in this, because there's stuff you learn more about this movie than you thought you'd know, ever know. Texas Chainsaw Massacre has inspired so many horror icons to be portrayed. It's like the scene where Sally's in that um, chair tied up at the dinner table, when she begins to freak out, you know, you see the zoom up on her eyes and all that music and all that. Loads of horror movies have made parodies of that scene, but a lot of it's inspired them to do scenes like that for their own movies. It's like in that horror movie drive through, you know, with Horny the Clown, where they've got that girl tied up, and that's before she breathes that fire, like that whiskey, you know, breathes that fiery whiskey onto the clown before killing him and all that kind of shit. So that's just one example of, of a film that uses them sort of scenes. But what, can, what can I say about Texas Chess Massacre that we don't know already? It's about these group of kids and this man. You know, they're travelling to stay in this um, this old house, which is um, owned to them by a relative or anything like that. You know, we introduce all these kids, the simple kids. Um, you know, you got Sally, the blonde. You know, um, Jerry. You know, you got Franklin, who's the guy in the wheelchair. He was one of my favourite characters in this movie because the way he portrayed himself. He was annoying at times, but also was entertaining to watch at times. He's no longer with us, the actor, God bless his soul. He passed away in, I believe, from cancer in like in the year 2005 or something like that. You know, but 
you've got um, you got Kirk, his girlfriend. So you've got all these group of teenagers, you know, I've got their own personalities, etc. And we just learn they're travelling across the country to go to visit this house for a break. And anyway, along the way, they pick up this hitchhiker. And again, another outstanding actor. I don't think I had a problem with any of the actors who portrayed their characters in this movie. They all seem to put the heart and soul into the characters in this. And we don't get, don't forget this was made in 1974. It's an old movie. So if some of the kids or younger generation watch this movie now, they'll probably judge it too much. But what they're unaware is, is that this movie inspired a lot of um, future horror movies. This is where like horror started all to happen, you know what I mean? But Hitchhiker did a, did a great job. I thought he was very scary, he was twisted, funny at the same time. I mean, the whole comedy thing really kicked in in like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which I'll talk about later on in this review as to why I don't like those movies so much. And I'll get off right off the bat right now by saying the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre film is my favourite one of the franchise. All right? I think it does well as a standalone movie. It didn't need sequels to become a franchise, you know. It didn't need sequels to make it as big as it is today. If they would just left it alone as a standalone movie, I reckon it would have done fine. Because this movie, believe it or not, and I'll tell you exactly how much, it made $30.9 million at the box office. With a budget of eighty thousand, between $80,000 and $140,000. So work that out. I mean, it was officially released of October 11th of 1974. Um, and like I say, Todd Pooper didn't just direct this movie, he also produced it, um, screenplayed it, did the story, and even did the music as well. So Todd Pooper did a lot of work in this movie. If anyone put his heart and soul into this movie more than anyone, it was Todd Pooper. You know? um, I remember like in the um, in one of these discs and the extras, um, the guy who played the Hitchhiker had a lot of issues with Todd Pooper, said it was like one of his um, scariest... Worst performances. <laughs> uh, check it out, it's all in the extras. But anyway, the guy who played the hitchhiker, you know, he's um, he said he's headed south, but all the kids are freaked out by him because of his appearance and the way he talks and, like, the way he, like, shows off his crazy side. You know, he tries to sell them a picture, and when they reject it, he turns crazy, you know, starts slashing his own hand. You know, you can watch all the blood and... Even the face expression on his face is like spot on. Of not just the um, the hitchhiker, but the the you know like all the kids as well, horrified by the events at the scene. He's like using this blade like to slash his own hand, and all the blood's running down his wrist, and you know he's like enjoying like the um, the fucking torture side of things, you know. And then eventually he flips and he attacks uh, Frank in the wheelchair by cutting his arm. They kick him out of the van and they uh, watch him. Like go into this like this freakish mode as of just driving away in the van. Frank is um, terrified by the events and he still thinks the hitchhiker's following them. But little do they know is when they reach their destination, they're not too far away from the house where the hitchhiker lives. You know, along with um, Leatherface, who's played by Gunnar Hansen, by the way. And Gunnar Hansen is a great actor, he's been in loads of films. And I had the pleasure of meeting Gunnar Hansen just before he passed away at a um, horror comic con. You know, he um, he's passed away now due to cancer, I believe, Gunnar Hansen. But again, he was just one of those smart, well-trained actors who put his heart and soul into the character. Of course, Leatherface doesn't say anything, hardly. He just mainly makes weird noises. And, but he expressed the character in a very unique way, like just by how Leatherface moves. Even like that little dance scene at the end where he becomes fucking paranoid and he's freaking out at Sally when she gets away in that pickup truck at the end. And he's like swinging the chainsaw around, so... He expressed his talent towards um, towards acting in you know certain ways, and they were very unique, whatever ways they were, if that makes sense. But anyhow, um, you know, one by one, all the kids disappear because they end up going to this house. You know, one kid gets um, hit in the head with a hammer by Leatherface. He starts freaking out due to his um, brain damage. Leatherface pulls him into the kitchen and slams the door shut. You know, then they get the scene with the girl who goes in there after him. She sees the house and all the furniture is made out of bones and everything. There's bugs all over the place. And in the end, Leatherface gets her and puts her on a hook while Leatherface um, tortures her by letting her see her boyfriend get sliced up with a chainsaw. You know, pretty pretty horrific, horrific scenes. But the thing is, this film, I wouldn't say it's the most glorious film you'd ever see. 
I'd say the scene where they show the most blood is on Sally at the end when she's like escaping from Leatherface and the Hitchhiker, but that, that's just my opinion. Other people think there's more gruesome scenes in this, but what I like about this movie is it was so simple. They did not need too much blood and gore. They did not need too much shoving you down throat, shit full of music to try and make, make it look scary or sound scary. They just used it so simply, and it worked. You know, the couches were simple. The atmosphere was simple, you know, the scooty household with all the bugs and the, you know, like the, all these dead animals and shit like that. I mean, just by looking at the screen, you could tell that the place probably really smelled bad, you know, the dirty atmosphere and the condition of the house and shit like that. So, I mean, even the scene where you have a face was like, puts her on that hook. You don't see the hook actually going into a body or a skin, but you can tell by the expression on her face that it was really painful and you can feel the pain right through the television screen. So that's one thing I liked about the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, how, how creative it was to be simple, yet at the same time, they did not like put heart and soul into um, shoving shit down your throat music or pushing all this shit onto you. You just simply took it in. You know what I mean? You just simply took in what was there and it worked. I mean, eventually um, Sally and Franklin, they go into the woods to try and find all their lost friends and relatives. Leatherface attacks Franklin in the wheelchair. Again, you don't see him get sliced up. But it, it's like it's like the scene's all quiet one minute. The next face, level face, comes out from the tree, slows up Franklin, and Sally runs to the um, runs away. She runs to the nearest gas station, which I was at before, um, to meet the old man. Little do they know, the old man's related to um, Leatherface and the Hitchhiker. He captures her, wraps her in a sack, and takes her to the house. And from then on, I think the best scene happened. Um, the scene where it really gets into your skin and like the scene like really when really it gets into your mind it's where Sally wakes up realizes that she's alive but she wishes she was dead because she totally freaks out and loses her mind because she's actually tied to the chair um, hitchhiker leather face and the old man are there you know they're playing mind games with her teasing her saying that they're gonna eat her you know or um, you take off her skin or whatever so she's there freaking out getting paranoid Losing her mind hysterically, you know, you see it zooms up of her eye and they're like trying to give the impression that she's like totally lost her mind, but they're trying to make the viewers feel sorry for her at the same time. You know, I don't know if the scene with the hitchhiker where he's like making them weird face expressions is trying to make the viewers laugh. So I don't know if I was trying to use comedy of some sort in this type of film, but they express that more deeply like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and then other movies. But where in this movie... It seemed to question you, like, what the fuck's going on? You know, they don't really focus, like, on comedy in this movie. It's mainly pure shut up horror. Mind game sort of type of horror. So, um, I don't think I was focusing too much on comedy in this movie. But all that changes when he gets a text or Shadows Massacre 2 and shit like that. So, I mean, they use the grandfather. I've met him as well, by the way. The actor plays the grandfather. But he's so old he can't hold the hammer and shit like that. But when she gets hit on the head with the hammer, she manages to break free jumps through a window and then the blood on her really starts to show after her injuries you know and I'd have to say I say the best scene is the dinner table scene but my favourite scene had to be the ending scene where she's trying to get away because she's running away Leatherface and the Hitchhiker are running after her the Hitchhiker ends up getting hit by this truck that's passing by and people say the main hero of this movie was the guy driving the truck <laughs> because he attempts to save Sally pulls her in the truck he gets out the other side, picks up this tool, and he like throws it at Leatherface. It hits Leatherface in the head, falls down, the saw goes into his leg, causing an injury, and then he runs the fuck away. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we never see this character ever again. There's no reports on, did he survive? Where the fuck did he go? Did he carry on running down that road forever? You know, but they say he was the hero of the movie, and he's one of the most talked about characters in the Texas Chancellor Massacre movies. It's fucking weird. You know, I don't think he went on to do much movie roles or anything like that, but they said he was a true hero in the movie for trying to save Sally's life. And he's the only guy that um, had the balls to actually fight back at Leatherface. You know what I mean? So, I don't know where the fuck the character went. I've done research, it was not enough detail. But a, a pickup that goes by, she gets in the back of the pickup. It shows Sally being driven away. She's laughing hysterically because she's lost her mind completely. A leather face is like doing his famous dance with a chainsaw. He's waving it around, going mad. That Sally escaped. And then the credits roll. And in my opinion, that was a great way to end it. 
you know, usually when they leave like a survivor like that, you think to yourself, did the survivor get away? You know, what happened to her? But more than like, but the villain, we know the hitchhiker's dead, but he comes back in part two. And um, the story as far as Leatherface goes is like one of the surviving villains. And just with the credits rolling with him being the only guy there with the chainsaw, was a great way to end it in my opinion. This is a great standalone movie. It did not need any of those fucking sequels. I'll say people would really give me give me thumbs down on this video saying Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 was great and all that shit. Which is fine. If you like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, that's fine. I'm not a big fan of it. Because I like to remember my films how I like to remember them. And that's by the original standalone movies. Not all movies need sequels. Sadly, we've had sequels in this movie. We've had remakes. We've had prequels. They've done the best to keep them going on and on and on. And I'm like, for fuck's sakes, we don't need them. This is the film I like to remember the Texas Chainsaw Massacre by. It had everything in it. Everything from the simple um, scariness, the, the non-pushy music. You know, it was simple yet terrifying. And it was, it was great for what it was. But part two and part three and four and all that, they all go way beyond that. They take the film in different directions, directions that we don't really want to see. You know, I say part two is more fun to watch. I suppose it's more fun to watch if you want to take it in that direction. But I, for one, don't want to remember Leatherface for being in that sort of movie. I like to remember him from this, the scary point of view. Because I didn't find him scary in part two. Yeah, he's more crazy, you know, doing dancing with that girl while she's wearing the skin on her face and all that shit. But I don't know. It just really didn't take my liking. Um, this is how I like to remember it. So if you're a fan of the sequels and all that, that's fine. I'm not. Will I review them? Possibly. But I won't go any further than part four because number four is the ultimate stab in the back. Fucking pile of shit part four is. And I didn't watch any more of the films after that. So... I probably might go as far as that, but as far as this, can, this goes, it's an instant classic, the first one. Sorry, something wrong here. Yeah, so as far as I'm concerned, the first one is the best. Most of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre fans will agree that the original is the all-time classic. And um, that's all I've got to say. Like I say, if you want to get the Blu-ray, please check out the special features in this. You'll learn more about the movie. And... Um, some of the stuff I've got in this, like the, like the sound recordists and the audio commentary and all that, but it's just so interesting. Really so interesting. It gets you into the detail how Tob Hooper um, got his ideas from this. You know, there's some, comp there's some um, interviews with some of the cast members in this. Like I say, loads of op um, outtakes and things like that, so please check it out. But I for one would definitely get this on VHS one day just to check out the... Um, you know, the old school side of it, like, all that kind of shit. Um, like I say, all-time classic. I'm just so sorry this movie's been so late. I would have uploaded this on Halloween, and we know that Christmas is coming around the corner, so I want to upload comedies and stuff like that in that in that month. So um, I hope you're satisfied with this review of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's no reason for me not to give this movie five stars out of five. Everything that I liked in it, it was so satisfying and simple. Um, I already said that this movie was released on October 11th of 1974. Um, I've always stated the budget. I can't believe the fucking box office it got. $30.9 million. That's really impressive. Um, Marilyn Burns, who played Sally, I believe is no longer with us either. I'll just quickly check that out, but I'm sure she's passed away. Yeah, she passed away at the age of 65. Um, died in her sleep. Of a heart attack. Oh, so sad. And like I say, it's a shame that Gunnar Hansen is no longer with us. I thought he was the best leather face, the original one. Although I think he played one of the guys holding the guns in the... Uh, was it the prequel or the remake or something? I can't really remember. But I know he played another role in a different type of film that was in the same franchise. But that's another review for another day. Alright everyone, please like, rate and comment this email if you've got any questions, but please check out Special Editions. This is a two disc um, special feature. One. Okay, and what I like about this cover is you get the uh, like the modern cover. And I'm surprised I haven't changed this over already, I think I'll do it now. See, I like the classic cover.
bear with me. There you go. That's better. Original cover. Can't beat the fucking classics. Uh, there we go, everyone. Please like, rate, and comment. Team, I've got any questions and tell me what about this review. Form it up, form me down. Do what you're going to do. And we'll see where we go from here. Peace out.